every product has, every job has, you can kind of break it down into these distinct tasks. And somewhere along, the, whether it's, I want to locate the things I need to do, I want to monitor that my things is going well, I want to change, I want to modify the steps I've taken. It's either too, it's either too inefficient or too expensive, and that's where your opportunity lies. So I'll kind of talk through a few examples of, you know, and I won't say that these companies use jobs to be done, but like you can think about them using a jobs to be done framework to kind of get your get your kind of like mind going. So Waze. So when Waze showed up, there were already a bunch of products that did what Waze did, does. Uh, I mean, Google Maps was fairly successful. Apple had a Maps product. Uh, but then Waze showed up, and the interesting thing about Waze is like if you look at the product, it's a map app to get you from point A to point B. But when you think about the job, the job is actually, I want to get from here to there as quickly as possible. And when you layer on as quickly as possible, you start to, find, you start to realize the inefficiency that existed in, say, Google Maps back in the day. right? So I, I'm, Google Maps is like the fastest way to your house is to get on the freeway, or the, tr the straightforward way to get to your house is on the freeway. You get to the freeway and there's traffic. <coughs> now you have to pick a new route and then you're messing around with your phone like while, like while you're in your car. With Waze, they added this notion of real-time traffic alerts. So now not only, are you, not only are you told, hey, even though the, the straightforward way is a freeway, there's traffic on the freeway, you should take back roads. And eventually, they added more functionality around proactively telling you, hey, traffic is beginning to build up. You should take this other path. Or traffic is eased up. You can get on the freeway now. And kind of using that framework, what Waze did was improve the kind of prepare, the prepare phase, the monitor phase, and the modify phase. So now you don't have to, you, you're not, you don't have to like, think about, oh, wow, there's traffic on the freeway. What do I do? Like, like it's doing that automatically. And, even, and that seemingly simple change to the traditional mapping app uh, caused Google to buy them for a billion dollars. Like, and even though Google already had a successful mapping product. Um, uh, let's talk about the iPod. And let's go back to my example of all the steps you have to go through to you know, play a CD. When the iPod showed up a million years ago, like 2002, <laughs> you know? Um, you know, there were, there were lots of things that competed in that, that, that space. There was like the tape, there was the Walkman, there was CD players, there was radio. But nothing, like, nothing beat the iPod with regards to what music do I want to listen to? It's already there. I want to create it, I want to put the music together. It's already on your iPod. Easy to play, easy to monitor, easy, easy to modify. And then over time, they actually went beyond even just like, I'm in my physical space. Like now you're like, you know, Taylor Swift has a new song. I don't have to go to Tower Records or if you were like me, jump on Kazaa if that's still around and, you know, grab some music. You could do all of that on your iPod, right? And if you think of the job as being, you know, I just want to, I just want to listen to music, they took this like fundamentally different, this, you know, when you think about like what they replaced, they fundamentally reshaped the landscape. When, when, you, look at, when you think about it from, as from going from, hey, I'm trying to, like, there are things you could have done incrementally, but what they did was transformative. When you think about the problem as, I just want to get people the music they want as quickly and easily as possible. And then finally, one last example. I have to, obviously, I have to have a Microsoft example. Uh, Xbox Live. Um, you know, before when Xbox when Xbox Live showed up, if you wanted to play a, like a, a game with friends, you had to. You, there's a LAN party. I remember when I joined Microsoft, all these engineers would show up in the evening, go to a conference room, and hook all the Xboxes up together. It was like super nerdy and super cumbersome. And you can imagine, you know, as they were, when they were giving feedback to the Xbox team, they they probably give feedback like, hey, you know, it's it's hard to lug my Xbox around. Like, put some handles on it or something. And the, the, the sort of feedback people would give around make like improve, improving the incremental experience. But with Xbox Live, when you think about it, the job, isn't you know make LAN play better. The job is. I want to play games with my friends as conveniently as possible. And you're like, well, 
Let's not have you go physically meet your friends. Let's connect you via the internet. Let's build a friend list so you're, you have easy access to your friends. Let's have game support like, like co-op play so you can both play the same game at once so it's not full screen. And if you kind of think about it from the jobs we've done framework, they basically re improved almost every one of those steps in locate, prepare, confirm, execute, monitor, and modify. With the way that they rethought you know, the, the practice of let me lug my Xbox to your house and let's play games together. Right? So this is kind of like some ways, some examples of using a jobs we've done approach kind of look at what some successful transformative products have done. So how do you now go about identifying jobs to be done in your own world? All right. So the number one, you, you have, like since this is about understanding the context your product lives in and why people are using, using your product, you have to talk to customers. That's it. Like there's no, there's no like you have to talk to customers. Um, I mean, I think there's like two general flavors. It's kind of observing, observing customers, which is cool, but really interviews are preferred. Like you want to have a dialogue and then kind of under, like, take notes, all of that stuff. Um, preferably, if you want to understand how to use your product or how they solve the problem today, get some screen sharing software. So you can actually see both like what they're clicking on and how to like even have them like vocalize, here's what I'm thinking as I'm, you know, I'm trying to like use this mapping app or whatever. And most importantly, you, as you, you want to understand their satisfaction with 